Guys, I'd like to welcome to the podcast uh, author and uh, podcaster Jesse Kelly. Uh, he's a veteran, former congressional candidate. He hosts the Jesse Kelly Show on Premier Network. Also, I'm right with Jesse Kelly on um, the first. And we're going to talk about his new book. It's called The Anti-Communist Manifesto. A great title. Jesse, welcome to um, welcome to the podcast. Uh, your first book, um, The Anti-Communist Man Manifesto. Interesting title because it's uh, it it sort of posits itself as opposed to the Communist Manifesto, Karl Marx's tract going back to the 19th century. Uh, let's talk about this idea of communism because I hear the phrase socialism on the left, right? Uh, you've got the, the squad and a kind of an identification with socialism, various socialist groups on campuses. Not a whole lot of people in American politics step forward and say, I'm a communist. But you're saying that, that we are dealing with communism uh, as a real phenomenon today. Can you talk a little bit about why you chose that title and why the word communism? Sure. Uh, well, for one, I'm, I don't consider myself a Republican or a conservative or libertarian or nationalist or any of those things. I'm an anti-communist. And what that means is, uh, and I'll get to who they are in a moment, defeating them is all that matters it's all that matters these these arguments we have on the right about this issue or that issue not that they're not important arguments i'm not saying that that's like standing in your living room arguing about what color you want to paint the walls while a gang of murderous thugs is kicking down your front door to kill all of you there's no point in your stupid argument until the communists are stopped first they have seized every cultural institution and no, it doesn't have anything to do with the proletariat or the means of production or any of those things. Communism is the religion of the malcontent. That's all communism is. That's why it's taken different forms in every country it's ever been. It was the urban poor in the Soviet Union. In China, it was the rural poor. In Cambodia, it looked different. Here, they totally switched because the workers and the poor, that, that didn't work. So they found new malcontents here. That's why it's the LGBTQ demon mob. And of course, the feminists and the climate change nutters. They're all just communists. And most of them, if you catch them off camera or uh, making a side remark, they'll admit it. I mean, you have all the Black Lives Matter founders uh, proclaiming that they're Marxists. Time and time again, Antifa will hold up hammer and sickles at their rallies. They're really not that shy about it. Klaus Schwab has a, a bust of Vladimir Lenin sitting in his office. They're not that shy about what they are. I don't know why people get mad at me for calling them what they are. Let's talk about this uh, idea of the malcontent. If if somebody is um, is upset with, let's just say, they they grew up in a small town, they're angry with their parents or with their pastor or with the, the, the local school, they develop this kind of... Now, traditionally, we've had malcontents, and this is part of human nature, right? You have people who are mm. upset with their lot. There's nothing new about this. Talk about the psychology that takes somebody who's a malcontent and gives them this ready-made ideology, uh, you know, go throw a brick through a restaurant, go try to take over the military. Well, how do you make that transition from I'm upset with life to this is my political way to go? Well, what it is, it's an outlet for them. They found a religion that is an outlet for their bitterness and their anger. And what all this is, is elites finding a way to grab more power for themselves. That's all communism really is, because if if I'm the malcontent and you're the elite, Dinesh, and I'm mad about this, I, I'm a feminist and I've been rejected by 8000 men. I'm 100 pounds overweight and I hate my freaking life. And Dinesh wants power. I am a prime recruit for you. You can come to me and say, you're right. Men do suck. And all you have to do is elect me and give me this power. And then I promise I will hurt the people who've hurt you. I will hurt the people who've hurt you if you just give me money and power. And that's all communism really is. You search society to find these malcontents and you use their bitterness to give yourself money and power. The problem is because it's a religion, it's a religion of anger and malcontentness. That's why it's killed and, and harmed so many people in a relatively short amount of time. It's only been around about 100 years to kill that many people shows you it really is evil. When did you think that this kind of communist infiltration really began in American politics? Is it uh, in the last 10 or 20 years or does it go back much further? 
But it goes back much further. And actually, in the Anti-Communist Manifesto, I go over all the history of it. It's laden with history as well as action items. But there's all kinds of history where I talk about where, when it came here, why it came here. It was, of course, brought here originally pr prior to the Soviet Union. But once the Soviet Union started to take hold, they started pushing it here. But then that kind of died. And, and then it moved into the American university system and journalism. I go over the history of all of it. They kept trying to get a foothold here, and they kept failing for the longest time, Dinesh, because they couldn't find the right malcontents. Then about the 60s and 70s, they figured out, we need to drop all this wor workers crap and focus on different malcontents. And they did, and they've had great success over the last 50 years. Let's take a quick pause when we come back more with Jesse Kelly, author of The Anti-Communist Manifesto.